down from the days of our pioneer fathers, the people of Western America have been characterized by their strong spirit of cooperation. By this means, they've fashioned our great Western empire with its priceless treasure of natural resources. Nature's abundance sustained our hardy forefathers. These same resources sustain us and our children. Fire is man's best servant, but the worst enemy of our natural resources. This picture is dedicated to the men and women who have unselfishly joined together and given their time to prevent and control range and forest fires. Our valuable western lands suffer a heavy loss from fire, often carelessly or deliberately started. We all know the value of forage when harvested by man. Similar values exist in our grass and brush lands where cattle and sheep do the harvesting. The toll taken by fire on our property, forage, timber and watersheds is tremendous. Well-trained volunteer firefighting crews are one of our best means of insurance against such heavy losses. Bill Brown is a trained firefighter and a member of local forest and range firefighters organization. Fire! Bill Brown has a job to do. A job that is going to require help help from the community fire crew. Prompt action is necessary. Bill and his wife leave to report the fire to a neighbor who is the local fire warden. Jim Thompson is the leader of this community fire crew organized and trained to fight fire on short notice. The fire is located on the map, and the ownership of the land is determined. The organization chart lists the service having jurisdiction over the land, the names of the crew members, and the location of tool caches. The warden first notifies the district fire dispatcher, who will secure more help if necessary. And then he calls the members of his crew. Tom Jones, the mechanic, Jack Smith, the grocer, and the rancher, Harry Thomas, who will bring his helper, Charles West. The tools are used only for firefighting and are kept in first-class condition. A first aid kit is an important part of the equipment. While the men have been getting ready, their wives have filled canteens and prepared lunches. Later, they'll bring the evening meal to the men at the fire. Bill and Jim arrive at the garage. Tom Jones changes his greasy clothes. They're dangerous on a fire. He puts on heavy shoes. The warden picks up more tools. The grocer with hat, heavy coat and gloves is ready to go. Little time is lost because they were prepared. The rancher, Harry Thomas, and his helper are waiting. The warden prepares a sign. He posts it at the crossroads for others who may come to the fire. The warden parks the car in a safe place close to the fire where it will not be in danger if the wind changes.
he climbs to the top of a knoll where he sizes up the fire and determines the job to be done. No further scouting is necessary as the entire fire is visible. Here's a model showing the entire fire job. The fire is burned over four or five acres in three types of fuel. Highly inflammable cheatgrass is burning in this part of the fire and against the wind. It is not spreading rapidly in the cheatgrass sector, but a change of wind could make this a dangerous area. In the heavy sagebrush area, the fire is spreading rapidly, fanned by the wind, and is burning toward a larger area of heavier sage in another drainage. This is the most dangerous area and must be controlled promptly. This is the juniper area. The fire is burning furiously, but is not as hazardous as in the sagebrush sector because it's moving toward a less dangerous area. For safety of his men and for efficiency of attack, the warden decides to start at a common safe point using a direct attack and assigns two men to the grass sector. They'll work in the direction shown by the arrow. The warden and the rest of the crew will start at the same point and hit the hot sagebrush area working toward the head of the fire. Returning to his crew, the warden assigns two men to the cheat grass sector and appoints one man to take charge. Each take a shovel and a canteen of water. With Pulaski's and shovels, the other men follow the warden to the hot sagebrush sector. Work is begun immediately on the cheat grass to stop the spread of the fire. The flames are knocked down by throwing dirt and by slapping the fire down with the shovel. The shovel is an effective tool for slapping down the flames. In some spots, fuel is removed by lightly scraping a narrow line. Using the shovel with a lever action across the knee makes this work easier. Smoldering fuels close to the line are dangerous. They are scattered into the burned area. Where time can be saved and lines shortened by taking advantage of trails and openings, a location is selected from which to start fires to burn out unburned fuel. One man starts the fires while the other makes sure they will not burn in the wrong direction. In order to portray the burning out process more clearly, this model shows the action near a hot fire line. The burnout line will be constructed here because there is less fuel along this line and it's shorter. The firing will start at this point and follow the located line. The arrows show the direction the fires will burn. They burn together, dying down when the fuel consumes. The men continue working on the cheat grass area. On the sagebrush sector, the warden and his men are stopping the spread of the fire. They are spaced about 10 feet apart to provide plenty of working room. The warden directs the work, carries extra tools, and keeps on the lookout for fire hazards affecting the safety of his men. The lead man has the toughest job because he's working where the fire is hottest. He must work rapidly without pause until he needs a rest. Then he steps out of the line and the next man takes his place. By this system, each firefighter has his turn at the hot front.
A grubbing tool is needed, so the warden gives the firefighter a Pulaski. The Pulaski is a dual purpose tool. The axe pot is used for chopping, the hole for grubbing and scraping. A firm grip prevents glancing. The firefighter cuts and grubs away from his feet at all times. The sagebrush roots are grubbed just under the ground surface using the hole part of the Pulaski. For scraping a narrow shoestring trench, the hole part is used. For removing loose material, the side of the Pulaski is used. A Pulaski or shovel should always be carried in the hands, never on the shoulders. Clearing, grubbing, or done only where necessary. Unburned material has been thrown outside the fire line and the burned material thrown in. A narrow line at this point was sufficient. Some sections do not require any line construction because of natural barriers or a scarcity of fuel. A close watch is kept for a breakover back along the line. The warden also watches to make sure his men have a line of retreat in case the fire endangers them. Usually, the safest place to lead his men is back into the burned-over area. He is also on the lookout for spot fires, which may be caused by sparks blowing across the line. One is started, and the firefighter is sent to bring it under control. At the spot fire, the firefighter uses the same methods followed on the main fire. He throws dirt to knock out the flames and constructs a light trench. He has stopped the spread of the spot fire and will check later to make sure it is completely out. The warden has observed some weak spots back along the line and sends a firefighter to strengthen them. This man watches for any live fire along the line that could blow over. He throws in burning fuel to reduce the heat close to the fire line. He scrapes the fire along the edge of the line into the burned area. The trench is widened where necessary to make it safer. He feels for fire where no trenching was done to make sure that a hidden spark will not flare up. The two men assigned to the cheatgrass sector have stopped the spread, strengthened the fire line on their return, and now join the other men. Here is what has happened. The four-man crew has stopped the spread on the sagebrush sector. Also, a spot fire has been controlled. They continue to this point and attack the juniper sector. The two men have stopped the spread on the cheatgrass area and on their return have checked the line and joined the other men. The crew is now organized into an attack team, two men throwing dirt, one limbing and clearing, and two building a shoestring or narrow line and scraping in. This direct attack against flame can be used on short, hot sections only, but never against a large, burning front.
The firefighter limbs and moves fuel away from the base of the tree to prevent crowning. He clears hazards and robs the fire of fuel. He clears away interfering limbs to safely remove an unburned tree. With a Pulaski, he scrapes a shoestring trench only where necessary. He scrapes with shovel and scatters burning fuels in the burned area. From this single tree, sparks are scattering and causing additional fires. The fire in this tree must be put out. A combined attack by several men is required to remove this hazard. A Pulaski man can speed up the work by loosing dirt for the shovels. In burning grass, a bushy tree makes an effective broom for knocking fires down quickly. A dragged tree plus a shovel is often effective. Being dangerous, it should be used with caution. A very hot spot can be subdued by this rotation attack. The force of the dirt and its effectiveness is increased by throwing the dirt over the shoulder as these men are doing. Let us now review the work done to stop spread in the junipers. It was necessary to clear a wide line through the trees. Enough bottom limbs were removed to keep fire out of the tree crown. The trench was built wide enough to keep the fire from spreading. A shovel width was sufficient. Fuels and other conditions made it unnecessary to clear or trench in this area. Here is the situation as it now stands. The entire edge has been worked. The spread has been stopped. After spread is stopped, line strengthening begins. The crew will strengthen the line with special attention at these heavy fuel areas in the juniper and the sagebrush. The men are organized into a line building crew. They work about 10 feet apart. No one passes the man ahead of him. Each man works until told to move ahead by the man behind him. The fire edge is felt with bare hands for live coals. If any fire remains, a trench is built.
This line strengthening will be continued on all the remaining hot edges of the fire. The men have had a tough, hot fight and will be given a few minutes to rest and eat their lunch at a vantage point where they can keep a close watch over the fire. For the final work, the warden outlines the next steps to be taken. This includes searching for spot fires which are to be put out. The area toward which the fire had been spreading is carefully checked. Mopping up is searching out all remaining fire within the burned over area and putting it out. The men will start at the fire line and work toward the center. Two of the men will search for spot fires while the rest of the crew will work on mop-up. Spot fires are often hard to detect and are easy to overlook. Here is one. Only a tiny spot, but it could start another fire. Notice how carefully he handles this fire. He buries and spades it in mineral soil. then fields for heat and spades the area where it was found. The mop-up crew puts out smoldering fire under juniper and mixes the burning fuels with mineral soil. A burning stump is mopped up by chipping off the hot coals. All inflammable material around the base is removed down to mineral soil. Hot roots are dug up. Burning limbs of this sagebrush are broken off and stirred into the mineral soil. He feels for hot coals that are not smoking on this sage stump. The stump is dug up and spaded into mineral soil. A manure pile is broken up, buried, and well spaded. A burning anthill is dug out, scattered and mixed with mineral soil. The mop-up work is continued until the last spark is out. The warden makes a final check before leaving the fire. He feels with bare hands those spots where fire might remain to make sure it is out. As an extra precaution, a man is left to hunt fire which might have been missed. He will remain until it is out cold. A job well done. 
It is good to have neighbors who can work together on a tough job. Together they help protect the range, our wildlife, our timberlands, and valuable watersheds upon which all of us depend. Through the cooperation and hard work of the local ranchers, the garage men, storekeepers, cattle men, sheep men, and all other community firefighters, we can carry on the fine tradition of cooperation and self-reliance founded by our forefathers. And we accept our responsibility of protecting our great wealth of natural resources. Oh.